Hello and welcome back to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Dicko with the Drone Launch Academy here to answer your drone questions. These are questions that you yourself submit. And today's question has to do with mapping. We've talked a lot about processing maps, what applications to use, but this person is saying we haven't talked much about how you share the map once you have the map. And this person is particularly asking, how do you share your map online, say with an embed code? This person just got a license for a Pix4D mapper. I can't necessarily figure out how to share the maps. It's difficult to find this information. So today I have with me a very active member of the Drone Launch Connect community, Michael Lilly. Michael Lilly is the founder of Wet Dog Drone Services. Michael, I've had you on once before. I'm glad to have you back here with me today. Yeah, we did this before and it was fun. And I'm, I really appreciate you having me back again because it, it was a good time last time. And since then, a lot of things have happened in my life. And it's been an amazing ride since then. And I'm really glad to be back. And be able to help someone else out. Very cool. Well, tell me about it. How's Wet Dog Drone Services, you know, how's the last year been for you? It took a turn in November, December of last year, actually. And some things happened. And let's just say that I am busier than I have ever been. I am nice. buying lots of new toys. And, you know, everything that I make is going back into the business as it should be at this point. It's been amazing. And, you know, I, I have several people to thank, but they knew who they are. I say thanks guys i appreciate the help so it's been a hell of a ride I mean, my main focus has always been drones will always be drones the big thing that i do is progression recording we've got a class on dlc that i did that's primarily what i do with it's taken a turn and it's other things have opened up and yeah life has been good life is great actually so hey man good so, for you and and yeah, you know just, you've actually I just bought a new drone so i mean it's, oh. How good is life? Yeah. So I just want a new drone life to is, work with. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Michael, I watch your progress and what you've shared on the Drone Launch Connect community platform. A lot of what you do has to do with mapping. Been on here before talking about mapping applications. And so now when it comes to this question, you're, you're kind of the perfect guy. You're used to helping people out within this community. Let's dive into it. You process the map. There's various ways, it's various platforms, applications you can use, but how would one share that map? Well, if we're, if we're referring to Pix4D, the first thing you need to do is you need to find the map that you processed. And I know I struggled with that at the beginning. You're just going to go, if you're on a Windows machine, you're going to go to your documents. There's going to be a folder that says Pix4D. Inside that, there's going to be the file name that you created. And then there's going to be inside that folder, there's going to be three other folders. That bottom folder that is in there, and I wish I had this off the top of my head, but I don't. But inside there is where you're going to find your ortho map. That's what you want to share. That's what... Hopefully that's what the client asks for, is asking for. In there, there may be a, a folder called extra that's going to have your DTM in it, your digital train model, your DSM, your digital surface model, and then probably also your contour map. I mean, the big thing that I use out of there is, you know, I've got one client that they want the GeoTIFF and then they want the Topo to go with it. And that's, that's all they want. And it's like, that's awesome. That's easy money. Yep. Our processors on the site. And with them, they are in the Trimble ecosystem. So they do everything that I do for them gets uploaded to project site, which is a Trimble product. And all the jobs that I'm working for, they will be listed in them. And I just find the, the job that I'm working and then I just upload those files that I just created onto their system. And that is just so easy for me. I, I, I don't have to do anything else other than say, hey, John, you've got new files in the Clear Creek folder. Yeah, that's the most recent one they're working is up in Idaho Springs, Colorado. So that's the easiest one that I do. Once you have those files, and it all depends on, I hate to use this word, but it depends. It depends on what you've set up with your client, how your client wants these things delivered, because they're going to tell you what works for them. You know, you could offer them up. I have a client that I upload stuff to my Dropbox and then I send them an email. It's like, hey, your files are here. Great. And then they come get them. I would send you to my website, but I kind of, kind of crashed my website when I changed over providers and I just haven't been able to fix it yet. I'm working on it. Everything, it's a work in progress. The other thing with like getting back to that website, what I would do there was I would create a private client page and I would put their stuff right on that web page and then buy a plugin in WordPress. They could just click on that file that they wanted to download, whether it was the big two gigabyte map that I made or some of the stills that I made or the panos that I made, whatever it was that they wanted, they had all of that listed out and they could see them, they get a preview on it, they click on it, it pops up. Now, none of this is hosted on my website. It's all actually in my Dropbox. And so there's, there's a plugin that allows you to do that. You just click on the file and it'll give you the option to download. So that way you're not clogging up your server and they can just take what they need from there. I mean, it, it's really easy, but 
the hardest part is finding out what the client wants. You know, they will tell you, yeah. but you may have to ask directed questions, I guess would be the word, or, or calibrated questions to find out what they want. Do they want relative ac accuracy? Do they want absolute accuracy? Because they're two different things. One requires a little more, more work, a little more equipment. One is just you go out there and you fly your drone and you just press a button and off to the races and you take that and you load it into PIX 4D and steps one, two, and three, and you're done. If they want absolute accuracy, that's going to take a little more time, a little more effort, but it also pays a little bit more. So it, it all depends on the client's needs. Okay. That's a great point, right? Because the client may not necessarily have the tools to receive the ortho well, map. And the yeah. That's the other thing. These orthos that I generate, you know, they're and sometimes they're huge. Yeah. I actually have a client that I will generate two orthos. I mean, I run it through Pix4D twice. So the first time I'm running at full resolution, and that's going to give me that really, really big GeoTIFF. But I'm going to need that in a later step. Now, I know that they don't have a computer that can open up the size GeoTIFF that I just generated. So I'm going to run it again at half scale. And that's what I'm going to upload to them. And that works for them. But what I'm going to do with that really big GeoTIFF is I'm going to bring that into QGIS. I'm going to make this really nice map that's very accurate. And they can put it on the wall in their trailer. And they can use dry erase to, to write on it annotate various things that are happening on the site today or in the near future. And it's, it's really good for communications. And that's just an add-on. So, I mean, I've already done the work all for that. And now all I have to do is send it off to the printer. The printer prints, prints me out this big three by five map, laminated, and I get paid. I mean, it's a win for me and it's a win for the client because we still haven't figured out everything that they're going to do with this data because I've got some clients that, that have no clue about drones. It's like, well, here, let me just do this for you. Once I do this, we can talk about it and see if there's anything that we could do. And, you know, you just, sometimes you find something that works for them. It's like, cool, you're not a client and we don't make money off of you. Yay. But <laughs> <laughs> no. Absolutely. The client situation will probably help dictate how necessarily you're going to go about post-processing with right. your map. But you had mentioned QGIS, which sounds like a really cool application. And the really so, cool thing is that it's free. <laughs> it is free. It is free. And I will warn you that there is a learning curve involved with that. If you're in the space, you're probably familiar with Esri and, and ArcGIS. Well, ArcGIS GIS, I believe is part of Esri. When it comes to mapping, it doesn't matter the kind of map. I mean, you can make a map about population density that doesn't involve drones. You just get the data from wherever you get it from and you bring that into Ezra or QGIS and you can make a map about population data in the U.S. Where I use it, I use QGIS because it's free. ArcGIS is expensive. It's a little bit more robust, but I haven't found the need to pay for it yet. That may happen in the future, but right now, QGIS does everything that I need. One of the things it does for me is it converts the output from my Trimble DA2, which comes out as WGS84. I need to convert that in the state plane. That's a CSV file in the QGIS, and I can convert that from WGS84 in the state plane. And then the other thing that I can do is after I've processed my map, I can check the accuracy. So I'll bring that, that map that I processed because I held back some of the GCPs that I shot. I'm going to use those as checkpoints. I can pull that into QGIS, at which point I can pull in my checkpoints, my ground control points, look at the map, and I pull a measurement that tells me that this ground control point or this checkpoint is 0 0.02 feet or two inches away from where I said it was. So my accuracy is close. I think that's close enough because the engineers that I work with, as long as I'm under a tenth of a foot, I'm golden, and that's easy. And then the other thing that I can do is I can take it from my base layer, like a Google map, and then I'll take that same map that I've made and used multiple times at this point, and I'll make this big poster that, that I just talked about. And it'll go on the wall of a construction trailer. I update that once every two months, maybe, whatever, the, yeah, because I can, I can sell that data again and again. It's not something I offer initially, but it's there if you want it, because I've, I've already got the data. It takes me 10 minutes on the backside, make that three by five map and put all the little fun little stuff because I have a template that I use and yeah, I just send it off to my printer who's local and they give me this really nice map. That's like I said, three foot by five foot, three by four, whatever size the client has room for. I mean, we tried to get one that was four by six, which we could do, but the problem was it was going to be outside and the dry erase component of it wouldn't hold up to the UV rays. So we were going to put a piece of Lexan or plexiglass over top of it on the outside of the trailer. And then we thought about, it's like, man, that's a lot of work doing that. Every, you know, why can't we just put this like on your whiteboard with magnets? He said, that's a great idea. 
So that's what we did. We just brought it inside. And when he has his, his sub meetings, he just puts that up with some magnets and yeah, he circles and arrows and yeah, it's, it's awesome for him. I've seen one of the examples of it. It's a three by five map that you shared. With um, the dog. Yeah. That's, that's with the dog story. sitting right yeah. on top of cute dog, which always helps in any photo, but super professional looking map. Right? Yeah. And it, 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 it's it, funny when I, when I posted that up, everybody thought I said dog for sale. And no, it's <laughs> dog for scale, people. Dog for scale. That's oh, the original no, that's, wet dog right there. There it is. Yep. The, the namesake of it all. And so really, honestly, going back to the meat of the question, you're kind of sharing already three different ideas here about yeah, using so you, a- you've, you've, you've got on the client end on just uploading directly to their server, hosting mm -hmm. it in your own Dropbox. And I've got a mm -hmm. caveat we'll talk about in a minute. or putting it on your own webpage and then yep. giving the client access to that by building. Dropbox can get a little expensive. And I tell all my clients, it's like, okay, I'm going to have this here for 60 days. If you don't download it after 60 days, it's going to go away. Does it ever really go away? No, I'm a digital pack rat. I've got drive, I've got a stack of hard drives in there that has data from the last couple of years that is just building up and building up so that if there should ever come a need that there's something that the client wants a year later, I've got a drive that's tagged, you know, January 20 to G uh, July 20. And then the next one starts in July and goes to December or whatever. I can go back and find that data. Now, if they didn't download it, I already did the work. So that means I probably got paid for it. So now it's a year later, two years later, and they want it. I think I'm probably going to charge them again because I've got to find that data. So yet again, I mean, storage is not cheap. You know that I know that storage is not cheap, but yet here I am talking about how many hard drives I got sitting there that are full because, well, I'm a digital pack rat, as Al says. Hey, well, that's fine that you're just, you're covering your bases, but I agree with you. And it's hard to get the client necessarily to follow the rules when it comes to a 60 day rule. I've, I've been there as a video producer myself. I, I've been there and I can feel that pain. Michael, before I let you go, I've got to ask you again, going back to your involvement in the DLC community, you're not just sharing your progress. You're also helping people and guiding people when they have questions as they're starting their own businesses and asking questions like the ones we're answering today. What piece of advice do you have for somebody now that you're this far into your business? What advice do you have for people looking to do So what my advice there is that if we're talking to the mapping space that I am in, and that's where you want to be, we're all on the same road. We are all on the same road. Some of us are further down the road. Some of us are just starting. Some that are starting want to get down that road. And the one thing that I will tell you that is very important, and, and I'm talking to you because you know who you are out there, patience. Patience is so important. It's not going to happen overnight. I didn't get here overnight. I have spent hours upon hours upon hours upon hours going down rabbit holes to find something as simple as not knowing how to use iTunes. <laughs> I had no clue. I spent hours trying to figure out how to put a file onto an iPad. And then I just happened to mistakenly click and oh, there it was. And it changed my world. It made everything so much easier. But it's patience because I, and I, because I didn't stop. It's just, you'll get there. You just find somebody that you can work with locally, online, whatever, because they're, that's one of the things that I love about the community. And I'm not just talking Joe Lunch community, Joe Lunch Connect, that community. I'm talking about the drone community in general. We are always, I won't say we, most of us, the majority of us are always willing to help somebody else out on their journey to get to where they want to go. It's an amazing thing. And I'm really glad to be a part of it. But yeah, well, that's, patience is the key. And that's great to hear it. It means a lot from somebody in your position. You've paid your dues. You've worked very hard. You've come this far. You still have a plenty that you're going to be you know, moving along and accomplishing in the future. Michael, I really appreciate you coming on here, sharing your experiences when it comes to this question, but also in the business that you're doing in itself. Well, I appreciate that, John. And you know, I enjoy helping people. And we talked about this when we were getting ready for this. I get multiple phone calls a day from people in the community saying, hey, how do you do this? And it's like, this is what you do. In fact, I was on a Zoom call before this started in the community and I'm probably going to have to set up a phone call tomorrow with another guy. I know this is cliche. It's, it's what I do. It's just who I am and I'm in a good place and I am very blessed to be where I am. And anybody I can share that with, I will. So. Oh, please. And, and please continue. Keep sharing with the Drone Launch Connect community. This is Michael Lilly, founder of Wet Dog Drone Services. Look him up, look up Wet Dog Drone Services and what they're doing. Also check out the Drone Launch Connect community. You can catch Michael there. You can see how involved he is in answering questions and also updating people on his own career, on his own work. How do you become a member of Drone Launch Connect community? Very easy. 
Easiest way is going to dronelaunchacademy.com. There's a tab there, Drone Launch Connect. Get, you'll be able to start a seven day free trial. Also go to dronelaunchacademy.com slash DLC. That'll get you there as well. Become a member, join our community, start getting involved, ask questions, answer questions. It's a great community and everyone's better off for it. And submit your own questions there. We are looking on DLC all the time to look for questions people are asking and then we can answer them here on this podcast. One other way you can submit your questions for this podcast is ydqa.io. Type it in there. We'll see it and we will find someone who can answer it. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.